Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. Today I want to talk about using scriptable objects for game settings. So if you've built a game before that had settings, you may have put them just directly in your scene, and that usually works for games where you're not loading in different scenes, you're not changing out the level. You can just have an object there that has all of your settings on it and then read from that whenever you want. But an alternative way that works much better if you're loading different scenes or if you want to be able to change out your settings pretty easily is to just put them into scriptable objects in your project folder. Like here I have an easy one and a hard one. Now these only have one setting on them to make the demo simple. But I'm going to show you how to set this up and how you can use this in your projects. So here we have a demo scene with an enemy spawner and you can see it's got a game settings assigned to it and the setting is easy. So if I select easy down here, you see that this actually just has like again a single property on here for an enemy count and it's going to spawn five enemies. So if I hit play, you should see five enemies spawn on my enemy spawner. There we go, five different guys appeared in semi-random locations. And if I want to change this, all I have to do is select the enemy spawner and drag in hard. Now hard mode is activated and I'm going to get 20. So let's hit play, watch that happen, and then look at the code. There we go, we've got 20 there. So how do we create these? How do we make all this work? And then how do we tie this into a bigger system? First, let's look at the game settings scriptable object class. So the first thing you'll want to notice is that we don't use mono behavior. Instead, we're using scriptable object as the base class. This just means that it can't be instantiated and it's going to show up down there in the project settings for us to edit still kind of like a mono behavior but without a little bit of the overhead that we don't need like a transform. Uh, the other important part here is this attribute for create asset menu. This makes it so I can actually create these objects. Since it's not a prefab and I can't add this to a game object, we need a way to create these and this is what does it. And it's important to set a menu name here so that you can create the object easily and see what it is. So if I right click in the project view, you'll see I now have a create menu and or I actually at the top of the create menu I should say I have a new game settings option. So I can hit this and I got a new game settings created and I could make this like my medium and have it spawn seven enemies. Oh, M-E-D-I-U-M. There we go. So there we go, I've just created a new one. Again, that's the create asset menu attribute that you need to add up there. Now in the game settings, I have a single serialized field for enemy count, setting it to 10. And then I have a public property that just returns this. This is so that my code can't accidentally go in and change the value of the settings. If this was just a public property, if somebody made a mistake and set enemy count to six, it's gonna actually update and change my scriptable object. And that's not what I want to happen. I just want this to be read only, so I just wrap it in a public property that's read only and keep everything else private. So one issue that could possibly spawn, spawn from this is that um, if we set it up just like this with game settings referenced in every single enemy spawner, and maybe I have you know five enemy spawners then when I want to change this, I'd actually have to go in and swap it out for every single one. Now you may have specific settings that you want to associate with a specific object. In that case, this totally makes sense to do it just like this. You know, you have like a hard enemy and you want to just drag the hard enemy settings to that one guy. Totally fine. Or, you know, you want to vary it per thing. But if you have some global settings and you want to get those, you really don't want to be assigning it in seven or 10 or 20 different places because then you know you may end up with enemies are on medium and players are on hard and buildings are set to easy and again if that's the way you want it to work then fine but you may want to have a more global settings and to do that you can just create a simple wrapper something like this settings reader class that i have here so let's create the game object for it and then i'll show you the, the code there it's really really simple though so just go game object create empty call this like settings reader attach that script and then i can just assign a game settings to it so i assign medium and then jump into the code and you'll see here all we're doing is creating a wrapper to get the game settings. So now my other classes, like my enemy spawner, say I don't want to have different settings per enemy spawner, instead of referencing a game settings right here, I could just call in to get my settings readers game settings. So I'd probably make this a singleton, do something like a public static settings reader instance, and then do a get return instance. And then we do a private static 
settings, up settings, reader, instance. And then in an awake, we could just set this. Now there are better singleton patterns that you could use. Um, but this is just a, a really simple example. If, if you've never used a singleton before, I'd definitely uh, recommend you check that out so you understand how this works. But essentially what's gonna happen is we're gonna get us, when this thing in, awakes, it's gonna set its static reference of instance to the object that awoke, which is gonna be the one that's placed in our scene. And then I can call settings reader dot instance to return back out that one instance. So if I go back into here, I could just do settings reader dot instance dot game settings, oh, not game object, game settings. And now I've got uh, settings that I only need to update in one place and my code can just access it by pulling this in. And then I don't need to keep this object alive. I can let it die and reload on new scenes and those scenes could have different settings if we want. Um, I, I could optionally keep this alive, but I probably wouldn't. So that's, I think, everything you need to kind of get started. Um, again, if you want to have individual settings, that totally makes sense for some games. If you want to have global settings, just create some sort of a wrapper in your scene that references one of your objects so you can easily swap it out and totally change your game up without going in and modifying a bunch of different places. You don't have to go in and change you know, health on 20 different guys or spawn rates or anything else. You could just do it all in a single settings file. Now, if your settings file is getting huge, um, break it up. Don't have like one giant mega monolithic thing that has the spawn times for every single thing and the health and for everything. You know, keep the things that make sense on a prefab on a prefab and go with the more global game settings type stuff here, like score multipliers, uh, player lives, um, starting money, starting health, uh, the, the more basic general stuff is the kind of stuff that I would usually put into these kind of settings files. So anyway, um, hope this is at least somewhat helpful. If you haven't used scriptable objects before, they're really, really cool and really useful. They kind of seem at first to be like a weaker version of a mono behavior if you're not really used to them yet. But once you kind of get into the flow of using scriptable objects for multiple different things, you see that there's actually a lot of power there in not having to have a game object and still getting a lot of that same functionality. So anyway, hope this helps. Uh, if you like the video, don't forget to thumbs up, get alerts, subscribe, and share with your friends. And thanks for watching.